the, the idea that forest fires are caused by climate change. No, they're caused by trees and wood catching on fire, by lightning strikes. The management of the public forests in the United States, especially in the West, where there are so many uh, federal lands, that's where these problems are mostly occurring or, be, or starting from, because they're being managed by a bunch of greenies in the city who don't know what they're talking about or what they're doing. All right, guys, welcome back to Yanasa TV's As a Man Thinketh. Love him or hate him. Our, uh, our guest today is a man who has, is no stranger to controversy. Uh, as a doctor of ecology from the University of British Columbia, and uh, he actually has an honorary doctorate of science from NC State University, Patrick Moore has been on both the front lines of the environmental movement and he has, uh, well, some would say he's been on the front lines of the opposite side. However, I would argue that as an ecologist, Patrick Moore takes a realistic standpoint to science. And the things and points that he has to say will really make you think about our environment, our climate, and you know what impacts we make that are good and what impacts we make that are bad. He's not saying that all of our impacts are beneficial. Uh, Patrick Moore has a lot of great insight on this subject. And so I asked him to come on to the show to kind of help share some of that insight with you guys and help, um, help people start to see things from a, a perspective. Not all scientists agree with some sort of consensus out there. And I think that um, the more you listen to, uh, to different people with doctorate degrees and, and, and real PhDs, the more you'll start to hear uh, differences of opinion on this subject. And they're all very educated. I, I like Patrick Moore's um, opinion on some things. He and I don't agree on everything, but like, I, like I've said before on our channel, um, that's not what this is about. This is about helping people start to think for themselves. And we're not going to do that unless we hear the whole conversation. So welcome to the show, Patrick Moore. I'm curious, Patrick, we've had a lot of forest fires over the last several years, and most of these fires have been blamed on man-made global warming. What are your thoughts on forest fires? Is this a climate change issue? Is this a forest management issue? Would the forests have naturally burnt off sooner than they are? Are we start storing too much carbon by suppressing fires? The, the idea that forest fires are caused by climate change. No, they're caused by trees and wood catching on fire, by lightning strikes. Historically, for millions of years, that's how fires began. And, and no one was there to put them out back then. And the native people in both Australia and North America learned to use fire to create landscapes that were conducive to wildlife and reduce the risk of intense fires through the buildup of fuel, dead wood, in other words, on the ground. And today, the management of the public forests in the United States, especially in the West, where there are so many uh, federal lands, that's where these problems are mostly occurring or, be, or starting from because they're being managed by a bunch of greenies in the city who don't know what they're talking about or what they're doing. And, but the truth is, even today, forest fires are far less extensive than they were before the 1930s, when Smokey the Bear was invented and people started managing forests. And they have gone up recently because of the fact that the Greens have taken over a lot of the federal land forest management with their fairy tales. But uh, the truth is, the Forest Service has expunged the history before about 1930, or even maybe it's 1950. They've expunged all that history saying they don't know where that data came from. So they're not going to show it anymore. It's in my book. I got it before they took it away. It came from their people. Where, where do they think it came from? They, were, they had it in their graph. They think they just picked it out of the air or took it from some kid that walked by the afternoon. No, it was their data from their database of forest fires. And they're not going to exaggerate the amount of forest that was burned. They might not see all of it. More likely, they would minimize the area of forest burned than they would. They're not going to go and look at a standing forest and say, this is part of the burned area. So 
you know, like, a, like a living forest. They're not going to say this is part of the burned area. And the Paradise uh, Fire in California is the epitome of bad management and ignorance about the ecology of forests. They built those suburbs, hundreds of houses in a pine forest, a dry ponderosa pine forest. Some people know that coniferous forests, needle trees, have a lot of pitch in them. Whereas broadleaf forests like oaks and maples and sycamores and stuff don't have a lot of sap in them. So if you build a suburb in a pine forest and leave the pine tree standing right beside the houses and by the roads, that's what they did. They left all kinds of forest inside this area. And then when the fire came down with a Santa Ana at a high temperature and very high winds, it just took the whole place out, including all the houses nearly. Nearly every house was burnt. 90 people or so died. Luckily, many of them were away at work already. But it, it's just such ignorance that allows these things to happen. And then they blame it on CO2. You know, no, it was bad management. When you put a suburb in a pine forest, first thing you should do is cut down all the pine trees or maybe leave one or two nice big ones just scattered around so they can't catch each other on fire. Leave a lot of open area. Think of Central Park. Look at Central Park. It has lots of trees in it, but it's not susceptible to a, a, a complete incineration by a fire because of the way it's designed. Lots of open areas, lots of shrubs, lots of broadleaf trees that don't crown fire like pines and firs and those trees do, the, the needle trees. That's yeah. just basic forest ecology. Well, and when you suppress, sorry, I got something in my eye there. When you suppress the fires for a long period of time, doesn't that just build up the carbon on the, the forest floor and make the fires even worse? Yes, but it's not so much from suppression as it is from doing nothing. Uh, that's what causes it to build up. The, the thing about forests is that the forests in the West, for example, of the U.S., that's where most of the big fires are. There's not a lot of big forest fires in Florida and the Southern tier states, is there? In Georgia and Arkansas, Alabama, Louisiana. There's not a lot of forest fires there, but there's a massive amount of trees. Mississippi has the largest percent forest cover of any state. And yet there's hardly any fires. Why? Because it's managed properly, because it's privately owned. Whereas in the West, almost all the bad forest fires are on public lands. Forest companies don't want their, their forest to burn. It's money in the bank for them when a tree is growing. But they have to wait a while. You see, the, the, for 15,000 years, the, the, the original people here learned how to manage forests by burning it, burning the forest floor off in the spring when the, when the wood is still somewhat moist, when the wind isn't blowing, and that cleans it out and it doesn't cause a conflagration. But if you wait till the middle of the heat is highest heat in the summer and you haven't tended it at all for the last 10 or 20 years, that's what the problem is. And you, you can either do it uh, like around villages and stuff. You can't just light the forest floor on fire because the wind might come up and take everything out. So there you pretty well have to do it mechanically. And why not take a few trees while you're at it and make some money? I don't know what it is about people these days, but they never think that maybe there should be a profit center when you have a cost center. Like it costs money to manage forests. So use some of the wood sustainably, right? Keep the trees a little bit separated from each other. Plant a new one. Make patches in the forest. Because wildlife loves it when the sun can reach the ground and grow the berry bushes. In a deep, dark forest, there's not as much food for wildlife as there is in an opening. I call it an opening, not a clear cut. It's like when you build a house. You don't want to have the trees on all four sides of your house right next to the wall. You know, you want, you have to create an opening when you build a house. And that is a clear cut. And it's also deforestation. You know, except deforestation is a dirty word. 
Patrick, thank you for joining us on As a Man Thinketh. I appreciate your opinions on these things, and I hope that uh, everything that you had to say helps those out there want to research more and understand a little more about our ecology and how all of these things work together and why there's a lot of fear out there that they don't have to buy into. And in fact, in my opinion, I think that this fear mongering that's going on is turning people away from caring about our environment. I've always said that people shouldn't be have to you shouldn't have to scare people into caring about their environment. It's something we should all naturally want to do for our environment. But when you start to throw out misinformation or you start to throw out things that just aren't scientifically accurate, they can't be scientifically accurate. What it ends up doing is it actually turns people off from caring about the environment. And that's the last thing that anybody wants. And so I appreciate your thoughts. I think that it's important that we look at things from a scientific reality. And then from there, people can decide, you know, how they want to move forward. They don't have to worry as much about how every little thing that they're doing is impacting the environment, but they can start thinking about how they want to treat their environment and make it the most productive use of their footprint.